Hey everybody, welcome to Persona. I'm Rob Simulcare. So while we're all hanging out in quarantine this week, we're looking for something new and different to distract ourselves. And uh, my guest today actually wrote an article about a way that a lot of people are uh, distracting themselves right now in the age of Corona quarantines. The nude selfie um, as a form of art. Diana Speckler joins me. She's an author of two novels, Who by Fire and Skinny. She's also a regular opinion columnist in the New York Times. And Diana, I love this column. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So how did you think to write an article about nude selfies and, and, and as art, no less? Where did this idea come from? <laughs> well, I think I've been in touch with friends a lot more than usual. Um, as many of us have. And I just had noticed a few things that I was hearing come up a lot from conversations. Um, one was that everyone's exes were getting back in touch with them. Another was that people were having crazy dreams. And the third was people talking a lot about sending and receiving selfies. And those who were talking about sending them um, were talking about taking a lot of care with them. And um, they finally had time that they'd never really had before to so they they've been rushing real photo through, they've been rushing through the nude selfies before <laughs> yeah. but now they had some time to actually stage them properly and 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 really make them make them look good yes <laughs> and um i became curious you know in other times when people have been stuck at home or just in other times that have been sort of globally stressful i wondered if there had been anything similar in the past. So I started just doing a little bit of research, you know, was anything, were lovers finding ways to communicate um, in other plagues, in wartime, stuff like that. And I, I, that was how I kind of went down the art history rabbit hole. And what did you find? I mean, there's, there's certainly a long history of plagues. You know, we all think this is the it, all, it feels like the first to all of us, right? Because none of us had really lived through, through this sort of thing before. But of course, if you know history, you know this is a fundamental part of human history. What did you find when you went back and looked at the history of uh, people in love trying to connect during plagues? Um, I think that the, the probably most salient um, comparison that any of the any of my sources made was um, there was a scholar in Australia who told me about the Decameron, which was a literary response to the Black Plague in Italy. And in this book, there are I think ten friends um, stand just hanging out outside the city, and to escape all of that darkness and dreariness and death, um, they were telling each other pornographic stories and. You know, that was the 1500s, I think. So this is not entirely new, but the, the, the mode is certainly quite new for uh, all of us now with these smart devices. And what do you think is the line? I mean, your, your article, what's interesting is it really does compare, you know, nude selfies as uh, to, to self-portraiture, to, you know, the, the classic sort of nude, you know, reclining woman on a couch sort of portrait that we all are you know, used to in, in our art history classes. Where do you think the line is between, you know, just the sort of snapshot of yourself in the shower and something that one might consider art? Mm. I would say, um, of course, the, the images that we all know well, the more famous images, for example, you know, Frida's self-portraiture, Frida Kahlo's self-portraiture or, um, Diane Arbus, that, um, that photo she took of herself in her underwear when she was 22, these sort of iconic images that we have. Um, I think probably the inspiration for them was different. And, um, and these are artists who have technical skill that not everybody with an iPhone has. Um, so, I didn't write the title. I'm not the one who who called these high <laughs> art, but they're yeah. <laughs> they're the, certainly the uh, never writes the title. It's true. They, and they always <laughs> no get, writers don't write the title. They always get but, in with it. Yeah, <laughs> but they are they are um, certainly a creative process right now. And um, anyway, I, I'm I'm certainly not the arbiter of what is art, what is high art, what is porn. But no one is um, really. I, yeah, 
I think time will tell. And, um, but I do think that, that when people look back on nude selfies from, from this era, I think that we will see them as a symbol of, of hope and an, an attempt at connection, um, resilience. Um, I think that they're a pretty beautiful thing right now. Something that might have might be easy to make fun of, fun of or laugh about is actually the only way people really have of, of connecting intimately while we're all stuck at home. There's such a history of depression, right? When it comes to great artists, of course, Van Gogh and others. And, and depression is now a, a real problem during this crisis as well. The, the, the inability to connect with other people physically, emotionally, you know, is, is causing issues. You're hearing reports now from psychologists about increasing rates of depression. Is, is, is this something that you see tied to, to this phenomenon of the, you know, people connecting this way? Do you, do you think, at least for some, it can be an antidote? I think, um, again, not 100% qualified to say, but I think that um, connection does help with depression and, and because connection just cannot be physical right now, this is one way to do it. I mean, of course, you know, there's an argument, an argument to be made that um, the thrill you might get from having somebody respond to your nude selfie in a positive way is not necessarily uh, about connection. And, you know, it might be just about, you know, a little buzz or a hit of dopamine or I don't know what, but we can't have sex right now. And um, this is something we can do. We can't hold hands right now. We can't kiss right now. We can't do any of those things that we might otherwise do to express love or to just kind of get our needs met. And, um, you know, if somebody is depressed and finds themselves finds themselves not reaching out, I would say certainly sending a nude selfie is better than nothing. Right, um, yeah. As long as it, you know, is to somebody that you trust and... Um, there's that, yeah. there's that. I mean, we all know that, you know, there's obviously a, a lot of history of these things ending up in the wrong hands, right? Yes. So there's that side, right? Make sure you do it. And there's, I guess there's apps now that are actually set up for this sort of thing. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know Snapchat certainly started that way, right? That was their that was their initial thing, the disappearing self. Yes, that's that. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we'll yeah, see. no, of course, of course, in the wrong hands, nude selfies can be uh, weaponized and have been, and uh, that's a whole other story, though. Perhaps we'll see uh, a museum of, of of those these things sometimes with the with the faces obscured. I'm sure they will. Well, they'll find a way to make put these things in uh, their proper artistic context. Um, what about you as a writer? You know, you're, you're going through this period like the rest of us. You're, you're a, a twice published novelist. Is this a good time to be a writer? Are you, are you finding a lot of creative inspiration or is it challenging because of the isolation? Mm, you know, I, I personally am. I, I personally am doing very well. Um, I... Um, despite what's going on in the outside world, I am I'm pretty inspired and, and I feel like creating and, and the writing is coming to me. I know that a lot of writers are having trouble right now, but the truth is um, about writers is that we're either creating or we're blocked and miserable about it. And we don't always know 100% why that is, you know, and so we will often blame or credit our Know, many external factors. Oh, there's a plague, so I can't write, or I'm home all the time, so I can write. But we don't really know why it's it it switches on and off. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what to credit, but I'm mm. very grateful that it's going well for me because I think to be stuck inside and blocked would would be a special hell. And I know that a lot of artists are dealing with that right now. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's certainly a history of great art being produced, you know, Shakespeare most famously during the, the Black Death or the plagues uh, of his time. Um, do you find you're writing about what's happening now or do you find you write to get away from what's happening now? Uh, I would say it's, it's both, but 
um, it would be very hard to produce work right now that doesn't either um, explicitly or implicitly implicitly reference what's happening right now. It, it is so um, deeply in our consciousnesses at the moment <laughs> that I can't really imagine creating art that doesn't acknowledge it. So um, I I love to have I, I love to disappear into the writing, but that doesn't mean that I'm ignoring the time I'm living in. Mm. It's hard to. I wonder, um, I wonder if it means we'll see a different type of art, a different type of writing or other types of art, you know, visual um, in the next couple of years as artists go through this along with the rest of us. It seems inevitable whenever there's anything um, impacting a country or, you know, in this case, most of the world, yeah. Uh, we definitely see art about it afterwards, so it seems inevitable to me. All right, well, it's I, I think great. actually I just want to say one more thing about that. Yeah. I think actually what's kind of interesting is that there's been a lot of art made about this kind of thing in the past that's been, um, you know, kind of science fiction or speculative, and it does feel like we're living in um, a science fiction novel come to life right now, so... It's it does. Of, it does. I think to. maybe one of the most challenged art forms going forward is going to be science fiction, right? I mean, the kinds of <laughs> yeah. when, when when reality becomes something this outlandish, it, it almost challenges the the sci-fi writer, right, to like come up with a new frontier of what's not really plausible, <laughs> right? Right. So, so I, I maybe now I'm, science fiction will include characters that don't have to wear masks, you know, in a world that's not <laughs> contaminated with virus or I, I don't know, it depends how long this goes on, but it'll be interesting to see. It really will. The, the, the ability for, you know, fiction to stay ahead of reality. I think that's always a, that's always a battle, right? That's always a challenge. And the more, the crazier reality gets, uh, the, the more we need fictionists like yourself to take us away uh, to maybe a better place <laughs> or at least a different place than the one we're in. So. I think that's right. Work. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for this article. It was a lot of fun to read. Um, again, it's uh, in this weekend's New York Times. There's a really cool, um, really fun sort of interactive um, use of it, sort of a, 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 almost a fictional text exchange going on between some Renaissance painters sending uh, portraits back and forth. <laughs> a little bit nicer than most of the uh, selfies that probably are being sent around uh, WhatsApp right now. But Enjoyed your column. Thank you very much, Diana. Really nice to, nice to meet you. Thank you for having me.